simply learn. Your pace, your place. Financial Risk Manager (FRM) Part One of the FRM exam covers the fundamental tools and techniques used in risk management, and the theories that underlie their use. Estimating volatilities and correlations. Welcome to the twenty-second lecture in your preparation for the FRM Part One exam. By now, you must have realized that volatility is an important parameter of a portfolio in terms of inherent risk. We have used volatility in our calculations of risk in the previous session, when we calculated value at risk. Volatility or standard deviation is used to quantify the risk of the portfolio. We have learned in our previous sessions how to calculate volatility or standard deviation. In this session, we will learn some more methods. Which are more accurate in terms of estimating the value of volatility. Agenda: Our main agenda of discussion will be estimating the volatility or standard deviation using different methods that apply variable weights to past data on returns. We will first begin with the concept of variable weights in calculation of variance. Then we will learn the different weighing schemes used in methods such as EWMA. Exponentially weighted moving average, and GARCH, generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. We will then learn about the performance of the Garsh method, and about estimating the weight parameters through a method called the maximum likelihood method. In the end, we will discuss estimating and covariance and correlations, which we have already introduced in previous sessions. Volatility estimation with variable weights. Let us begin our discussion by introducing the weighing schemes used in volatility calculation. Earlier, we have learned the expression for calculating variance from past M data. The expression is given in the slide that averages the squared deviations from the mean return. We take the simple average because we weigh all the past M data equally. That is, they make equal contribution. To the volatility in the present day. Now consider volatility as a disturbance. If the disturbance is very high today, it is most likely to be high tomorrow also. For example, when there was an attack on the World Trade Center, the markets became very volatile, and it continued for a few days. Hence, in estimating volatility, we need to give a higher weight to the most recent data. That is, we cannot weigh all past data.